I think of Jesus this way, but being a badass outlaw, I was like, yes, <laughs> I am so for that. I think it's, it, it, it's just a great depiction of who he was. He's not this rainbows and butterflies and everything. Life is just great, you know. Precious moments figuring. Exactly. <laughs> you know, he's real. And he showed, he showed us how we can be real and how we can love and how we can even sometimes love looks like tough love. And he showed that so well. You already know, it's the Joe Kingdom perspective. What in the world is going on, everybody? Deb Alexander here with the Joe Kingdom podcast, the show that gives you a kingdom perspective on the Joe Rogan experience. I am here with the usual suspects, Dr. Tony <laughs> Robinson from Las Vegas and the Ryan Pena, San Antonio, Texas. And we have a special guest, my favorite person on the planet, the Beth Alexander. What's up, babe? Hello. How's everybody? Doing well. Good. Yeah. Everybody else just nodded in agreement, but yes, we're all doing well. <laughs> Thanks for letting me drag you on here. Absolutely. I know that uh, you're super excited to, you're going to be doing the majority of the talking today. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Beth is a woman of few words, but every one of her words carries great value. So I'm excited for what you're going to add to the conversation. We're going to hop into the clip today, which is from Jill's conversation with Adam Curry and uh, just his experience with meeting Jesus. It's a super intriguing conversation. Let's go, Ryan. I was very interested by this because I've looked at every conspiracy theory, you know, moon landing, 9-11, uh, JFK, mm. I mean, all kinds of conspiracies. But the one I had never looked at, and now, you know, I'm 58, so I'm like, okay, let me look at this one, is um, God. And uh, I said, let me see about this God thing. I've never been a religious guy. And uh, so I start reading and I start talking. to people. I also found that around me, like a couple of people I was working with, they're all Christians. And not that anyone was ever pushing anything on me. When I asked them questions, they would gladly answer. And I, so I, there's a lot of stuff written about Jesus. <laughs> there's a lot written, you know, thousands of years of books. And, mm. and there's some contemporary stuff such as uh, evidence demands a verdict. And, you know, this just is so much. And I got to tell you, Joe, as sure as I know that Building 7 didn't fall down out of uh, sympathy for Building 1 and 2, God is real, Jesus existed, he was a badass outlaw, and it has changed my outlook on life. It has really changed the way I look at things. And I believe that we can win um, with God. I know that may, may sound a little weird uh, coming from me, but I am, I'm all in on this. And, you know, I'm not a, you know... A, like, you know, you may think of someone who believes in God or Jesus as a crazy right wing nut job, which I'm obviously not. But man, it's powerful stuff when you when you put uh, prayer into your life. It's really powerful. The Holy Spirit. It's I don't think there's anything weird about it at all. I mean, I think it's there's a reason why it exists, why it's so prevalent in so many cultures. It it helps people. It's about love. Yeah. It's and, all about love. Yeah. You think uh, Jesus's role was what do you who do you think he was? Well, well, he was literally the son of God, and he was on the earth to teach, and he, he wandered. I mean, he was an outlaw. He did some crazy shit. He you know, overturned the tax tables, and you know, he really railed well, against a lot you, of stuff. Why do you think, based on what information that you have, why do you think that he existed? Uh, well, to, well the, the, Jesus had to die after teaching us how to live a good life and how to be a good person, which is all about love. And that was to absolve us of our sins, which is kind of a cool out, you know, so everyone's a sinner, everyone's fucked up, everyone's flawed, but you are forgiven for that as long as you try to be better. I mean, that's literally every book in the Bible is about, like I was reading this morning, I um, uh, forget what it was, but it's like Jesus said, be quick to listen, slow to answer and slow to get angry. And I took that here because I remember last time I was here, um, which was over a year ago. And a lot of people said, dude, you're a fucking asshole. You keep interrupting Joe. And I did. And you even said, oh, calm down, Adam, calm down. You're excited to talk. But yeah, but that's just normal excitedness. It's not, you're not being an asshole. But it's better if I listen. It makes everything better. If you, so it's just small things like that. But ultimately, mm. it's 100% about love and, um, and knowing that it can it, it can be beaten this evil in the world can be fought against in fact it's probably already done 
Come on. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> this guy, he was dropping some straight fire. I was so excited when this uh, interview came out. And uh, a couple of my favorite things that immediately came to mind was, one, it was cool to see that, uh, you know, he referenced the Christians that were in his workplace and that they weren't, you know, that that high pressure evangelism thing. Because oftentimes in evan evangelism uh, methodology, it's like, did you get them to pray the prayer? It's almost like, how many wins did you get? Rather than, oh, when I introduce someone to Jesus, they get to win. Mm -hmm. So evangelism is not about you getting a win. It's about them getting to win. And it's about someone getting to experience. Like You can see the joy on his face as he's talking about this living relationship that he has with Holy Spirit. And I love that even that morning, he had had an encounter with the scriptures mm -hmm. where Holy Spirit was breathing a truth to him. And uh, he was making a connection, a real life connection. Oh my goodness, this scripture that I'm reading this morning reminds me of the last time that I found myself in this circumstance. And it shows me a way to show up as a better representative, mm -hmm. as a better, uh, you know, closer to the original intent and design of who he was. And so there's tons to get into uh, in this episode, but uh, whew, who wants to jump in first? So good. Come on, Dr. Tony. Yeah. yeah. I picked up on that key about the, the people that he worked with that it seems like they were inviting him to relationship with themselves before introducing him, the, him to, you know, to the father, because that's the better way, right? Because yeah. it's all about relationship. And so when we're going after getting you to say a prayer, uh, prayers, should I say it? Don't always Do it. change anything. Sometimes oh, it's just, it's true, we're just saying some words. But when we can get people to a place where through our relationship, with you know the father and with them it invites them it's the win situation where they get to engage in a really good relationship yeah i think there's a difference when you see people as an, the object of his affection versus wow. seeing people as a target for the next notch on your belt mm -hmm. come on and when when people are are just well we, we gotta we gotta try to get that person saved and we're just hitting all the time you know, we're actually turning people off to the goodness of God, mm -hmm. right? And so whenever people are just the, the a target and we're going to put them in our latest bulletin, we're going to put them in our latest, you know, whatever social media. Yeah, I led five people to the Lord this week or whatever. And, and a lot of times that's, it's, we're goal oriented more than we are people oriented. Mm -hmm. Wow. It's about people. Mm -hmm. It's about showing the father's heart, the father's love. You know, Jesus was not a high pressure evangelist, you know, and, and I get it. I mean, listen, I, I know sometimes it's just because people have such a, you know, their, their heart, a lot of times your heart can be in the right place, but you just haven't been taught better protocol, mm -hmm. right? Better relational skills. And so the goal should not just be to, uh, to have somebody just say a prayer, like you said, I mean, really, a prayer doesn't save you. All right. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to throw it out there. Mm -hmm. It says that Peter preached on the day of Pentecost and 3000 believed and were entered into the kingdom. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. There was no altar call or whatever. And again, I'm not trying to, you know, I'm not trying to be weird about it or, or, or critical about it. The thing that I'm saying is that I think there are way more people that believe in Jesus than what we might think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and bringing people to that understanding of, the Father is in love with you, and that's just going to keep drawing them closer mm -hmm. to who He is, right? Dang, so good. Mm -hmm. What in this uh, little mini clip stood out to you, resonated with you? What could you uh, relate to? Well, first off, I want to speak on what y'all are talking about, um, just personal relationship, because for me, you know, I became a Christian later in life, right? Not until I was 19 years old, which I just didn't grow up in that environment. Um, and the reason I came to Christ was because not because of someone like pestering and like pulling and like saying, you have to do this. I watched Dub live out his life and he, he constantly gave me an invitation, but there was never any pressure. It was like, Hey, you want to come to this? Hey, do you want to do this? Um, and finally one, one time I finally gave in, I was like, sure, I'll go. Um, and I went to this uh, youth meeting and actually felt a love that I'd never felt before. Um, I felt Jesus's love for the first time coming from a person, you know, um, but it was true and it was real. And I was like, whoa, like that's what changed me um, to step into, you know, 
being a so a Christian, right? Um, but is really that encounter of love from another person and not a pressure and not uh, you have to do this, but like, hey, this is here if you want it, you know? It's missionary dating at its finest. It worked. <laughs> and by finest, I mean you. <laughs> <laughs> it worked. 20 years later, we're still here, so... <laughs> Um, but I think for th one of the things that stood out to me that I just really liked because, um, I just, I think of Jesus this way, but being a badass outlaw, I was like, yes, <laughs> <laughs> I am so for that. I think it's, it, it, it's just a great depiction of who he was. He's not this rainbows and butterflies and everything. Life is just great, you know, precious moments figuring exactly, <laughs> you know, he's real. And he showed, he showed us how we can be real and how we can love and how we can even sometimes love looks like tough love. And he showed that so well, um, you know, and so I think sometimes as Christians, we feel like we have to almost be passive and like, well, we just have to love everybody through it. Or you can stand up for what you believe in mm -hmm. and you can use your voice because that's what Jesus did. Um, and be a quote unquote outlaw and stand up for what you know is right. And that's still showing people love because you do it through a place of honor. It's not a place of I'm right and you're wrong. It's from a place of I'm going to explain my point of view and I'm going to listen to your point of view. And whether we come to a compromise or not, we still had a conversation. Um, and so I just, when he said Jesus was a badass outlaw, I was like, yes, he was. <laughs> and I want to be that too. You know, come on. See, she wears me out. She's, I don't know if I should be on the podcast. I don't know if I add any value. You're here dropping the heavy, heavy like a mug. That was straight fire. Dialogue. Okay. That was, don't worry about it. Oh my goodness. I'm, I'm like, who is speaking into this guy's life? Because my favorite phrase that he dropped was when he was talking about how we can win. Like mm -hmm. when he encountered God, he encountered what it was like prayer, right? Which is just conversation. You could tell it. It's not a legalistic, formulaic, yes. one-way prayer. No, he's encountering conversation mm -hmm. with the person of the Holy Spirit. And he's saying, after I've encountered this, I'm realizing we can win and this battle against evil, which, and then he said, I'm not going to get exactly right, but it's probably already won. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh my mm -hmm. goodness, he's, mm -hmm. he's around some yes. heavy revving yeah. right now. Yes. Uh -huh. Somebody is speaking some truth into that. Dang, what else stood out to you guys? Yeah, you know that part right there about you know it's already been won. I mm -hmm. think one of the things that I that I started recognizing some time back was we're not here to try and gain victory mm -hmm. uh, because if I'm still trying to gain victory over the enemy or whatever uh, or over sin, then what did Jesus accomplish? It's like oh, so now I have to try to accomplish something that he couldn't. Mm. Dang. That doesn't make any sense to me. Mm -hmm. And so I'm not here trying to gain victory. I'm not here trying to get victory. I'm actually here to enforce the already won victory of Jesus. Come on. And when you start from that place of victory, when you start from that place of, of, of winning, mm -hmm. right, then that changes everything because mm -hmm. you're not trying to uh, go uphill through some up, up mountain, right? You're actually saying, no, we're starting from righteousness. We're starting from victory. We're yes. starting from this place of what Jesus has accomplished. And I'm simply enforcing that, not with obnoxious enforcing, right? Mm -hmm. yes. uh, with, I'm enforcing that through the very heart of the Father. And so that's where I get to, to, to actually put on display the already won victory of Jesus. Mm. And I think that's what we need to start presenting more. Come on. So good. So, and he did just that because if you've noticed, um, he had every opportunity to one, you know, it can easily, you can get easily offended when people are saying the opposite about what you you believe. Like Joe's like, well, how do you know that's true? It could be this people have, could say this shining is real. And he never took offense because mm -hmm. he already has the victory, right? It's already won. So I don't have to enforce anything. I'm just sharing with you my experience without trying to convert you to have the same experience. And I think for me, that was like, whoa, that's steep. Like he's able to sit and take this and offer the best explanation based on his experience and his encounter, because that will invite 
other people to say, I, I want to kind of, maybe Joe will, maybe he won't. But for me, I'm like, I want to dig further into this because I knew him before. When he was here a year ago, Joe didn't say it, but people did. He was an asshole. <laughs> and now here he's coming. To and- use the King James. <laughs> <laughs> but he's back now honoring, right? Yes. Because mm-hmm. honor, it, it looks like something. So he's honoring me and say, hey, I didn't listen last time, but I'm here to listen. So sometimes I think we feel like we don't need to listen. We just need to talk and convince. Dang, come on. That's really good. Yeah. I, sometimes you'll hear people say weird stuff like, I'm just offended for God. Like this thing that's going on in culture, I just I, I'm, I'm offended for God for that, and I'm like, I'm uh, pretty sure God doesn't get offended. <laughs> right. And I loved how this very clip started out with what he said was, "I've always investigated conspiracy theories." I was like, I might as well investigate the conspiracy about God, about Jesus. And he found out, oh snap, this is actually true. Mm-hmm. And how many of you know that Jesus was not offended? By his initial reference yep. of being called a conspiracy theory, he's like, come on, son, like, let's let's engage in this. However, however you are willing to meet me, I am willing to meet you there. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, you know, just the fact that he's still, you know, like how many Christians uh, were watched this or heard about it or saw a little clip and they're like, oh, he, he's clearly not actually saved, right? Mm-hmm. Because he's talking like Dr. Tony, you know, like... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Um, and bad acid or hey it is what it is and so uh it's just so cool to see somebody who can be authentic in their faith without losing the authenticity of who they are Mm -hmm. and man we need more of that i'm just man i'm excited let's let's watch this next clip and see where this goes um and i'm just new to this joe so i can't answer everything Mm -hmm. Uh, but i love studying it i love reading i'm just it's fascinating material and it is so much there it's really fast a person being the actual son of god i would need a lot of evidence to believe that evidence demands a verdict would be a great book to read but just as i know that jfk was assassinated and i really believe the cia was involved um because it's been written i've i've just Mm -hmm. read documents and documents so when you look into the bible and everything that's been written about the bible that's a hundred million times more has been written about that and it's it's survived all these years so i'm just i'm just someone someone who writes about the shining and a bunch of people review the writing of the shining and Mm -hmm. write about the shining it doesn't mean that the shining actually happened you know, and, just because so many people are writing about this particular religion doesn't mean that there was a person. But they haven't written about it. Doesn't mean sh- they weren't. I'm not saying they mm-hmm. weren't. I'm not saying I know. Mm-hmm. But I'm saying it doesn't mean that that, was, that no. man was the son of I'm God. I'm just telling you, my process is when I investigate things, and it, to me it was a conspiracy theory. Like, I'm just going to start reading. And it, I read for three weeks until I gave up and said, I can keep reading, but... All the evidence just is thrown at me over and over and over again. If I'm going to believe certain things about JFK or 9-11 or uh, whatever, which I've read as much as I can, but there's not that much. It's just it, it, for my own my own conscience. I have to, if I'm going to believe that after reading you know 50 years of documentation versus that thousands of years of documentation but it's thousands of years of documentation of a story it's interesting that some people would rather not get there and rather be in a shitty depressed yes. state <laughs> yeah. as long as they're not duped <laughs> <laughs> but, but you've been duped by life like of course because your life sucks but <laughs> <laughs> see guys like this is why i love joe rogan man like first of all i love how his mind thinks i have a value for his value for truth and, you know, there, there's to me, when I hear him asking these questions, like he wants to believe the truth. Mm-hmm. And so uh, he's in that pursuit of that. And the good thing is, is that we know that uh, we believe that God is good and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek yes. him. Joe is in pursuit of truth and truth is the person of Jesus. And so uh, what, you know, Joe is he's so wise that he has found and implemented so many attributes and principles of the kingdom that are making his life good. I just wanted to meet the king too Mm -hmm. and uh, get to enjoy just that aspect of sonship. And I believe that's going to happen. But I love how he thinks. And then I love how he communicates. There's always kindness and authenticity in the way that he communicates. You know, he assured Adam, it's not weird at all, you know, and they said, it is fascinating material, you know, so there's an openness um, 
because I believe of the authenticity that Adam is engaging him in the conversation. And so what did you guys see in this second clip here? Yeah, you know, I, I, I was thinking the same thing, Dub, that a, a pursuit of truth will lead you to an encounter with truth, mm -hmm. yeah. right? And so we know that truth is not just facts or information. We know truth is a person. Mm -hmm. And so anytime you're, and, and it can be through any area, whether it's through science or in this case, through conspiracy theories. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's amazing to me mm -hmm. that this guy wasn't like, you know, I mean, he's going through, he's going, he's approaching this as though it's just another theory. It's just another crazy idea. And yet in that pursuit, he finds Christ. Come on. That's amazing to me because I love how the Lord will use science. He'll use math. He'll yes. use, he'll use conspiracy theories. He'll use history. Anything that you are looking through, it can lead to him. It can lead to an encounter with truth. And then, and then what I love about it is that this is his journey. Yeah. Yes. For lack of better words, his testimony, right? Which testimony in scripture, like they overcame him, overcame by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. That word testimony is not what we think of it today. Mm -hmm. Testimony today is like 45 minutes of all the bad stuff I did. And then uh. Jesus came into my life, right? <laughs> you know, that was our, that was kind of what we thought of as testimony. But testimony literally is a firsthand witness, a firsthand account. A person who, who had a firsthand account of something. This guy has a firsthand account of who God is in his life. And you can tell he's not going to be swayed from it. Mm -mm. Yeah, no. He, it wasn't just, yeah, I heard from somebody that, you know, there were 300 and something prophecies from the Old Testament that, you know, were fulfilled in Jesus and whatever, and all that, you know, has its place. But he actually had an encounter that you can't take away from him now. It's not informational. It's something that he's experienced the heart of God. So I think that's beautiful. I love that. And that's the kind of, that's the kind of person I think that type of conviction he can't be shaken mm -hmm. from it. And that's actually something that will stir other people. Mm -hmm. Say, man, I want to, I want an encounter like that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. So good. And you know, he's just talking to Joe, but he's actually testifying to the world because we're watching it and we're dialoguing about it. So how many others will see this and now begin to ask questions that lead to them discovering and having encounters with the father and this, and I believe it says in the scripture, um, you, you know, seek and you'll find. So when people are seeking, let them seek. If they're seeking truth, they're going to encounter truth. They can't not hit. A, it's not like Jesus is this moving target, right? Like, yeah, no. <laughs> and he's like, no, you're seeking me. I'm going to show up Come and on. I'm going to meet you there. And I'd also like to point out that I might be the prophet at the table because I knew he was going to talk about the shining and this hey. encounter before they talked about you it. You did. You, you, you partook kingdom. of the glory of the age to come and pulled it into the first segment of the, the episode. to come. <laughs> <laughs> Beth, close us out with deep and weighty truths. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I agree with Ryan that, you know, he's so like, he's, he's like, this is my truth. This is what I have discovered. And I would just, you know, encourage anyone wherever they're at, whether you still think it's a conspiracy theory, after watching this, after talking, you know, uh, or hearing this, um, go seek it out yourself, you know, go, go do the research and see what you find because he, Jesus is the truth and you're going to find the truth. No matter, no matter which Avenue you start seeking, you're going to find the truth no matter what. Um, and I have a question Shoot. that Dr. Tony will answer it. So okay. She already knows what question it is. So, I found it interesting, you know, that, that Joe, he is very honoring and very respectful, but he's like, how do I know that Jesus is the son of God? Right. And so is it okay to say, you know, I don't think he's the son of God, but I know he was real. Right. Like Jesus was, there's other religions that acknowledge that Jesus is real. Mm -hmm. He was a real person, not the Messiah. Right. So is that an okay place to start? Like, Absolutely. Like, yeah. sure, Jesus was a real person, but how do, how do I know he was the son of God? You know? And so maybe that's a good place to start seeking the truth. Absolutely. Is from, mm -hmm. that, from that point of view is, 
there's more than Christians that say that Jesus was a real man. Mm-hmm. Yes. And so to me, that's a, an easy place to kind of take a step forward into looking for the truth. Absolutely. So yeah. I love that. So there's good. actually no wrong place to start. Yes. Looking for Jesus. And uh, I like it. Uh, my buddy Brian Orm always says that um, not every road leads to Jesus. But Jesus will meet you on any road Mm -hmm. in order to lead you to himself. That's good, yeah. And I think, you know, we've talked about this before. You have, like, for example, uh, in Islam, they believe that Jesus was a real person. Mm -hmm. They believe that he was a prophet, right? And so so that is a starting place. Mm -hmm. Yes. And how many, I mean, I know of many occasions where Jesus has actually appeared Mm -hmm. to those in Muslim faith you know, that he's appeared to them in a dream, in a vision saying, Hey, I'm not just a prophet. I'm actually the son of God. Mm -hmm. And there have been, I mean, there, because I've done ministry in the Middle East and stuff. And so, I mean, there have been entire villages that all had the same dream, the same Mm -hmm. night and all get converted and nobody is, is killed. Nobody evangelized. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, so to Beth's point, you know, God will, will start the conversation on whatever you throw on the table. Come on. Yep. Hey, I think you were real. Yeah, I was. Let's take it to the next level, mm-hmm. right? I don't know if you were real. Okay, well, that's that's okay. We can start with that at least, right? And mm-hmm. we can build a conversation up. I think God's the, the greatest conversationist in mm-hmm. the world, mm-hmm. yes. yeah. right? His love is willing to meet you wherever you are and take you to the next phase. Mm-hmm. Come on. Yeah, I love that phrase. I don't think you were real. That's a great place to start because you're having a conversation with him, even if you don't believe he's real, right? right? <laughs> right. <laughs> oh my goodness. Do you have anything you want to add? Before? You know what? In a um, in the days of ancestry DNA and all of that, it's like, I know you're real. I've never met your father, so I don't know if that's your father, but I know you. So now I'm curious to know, like, where did she come from? Mm. Let's start, let's do a DNA test at 23andMe, because you kind of got curly hair. I've seen your makeup. We, You could be my daughter, but let's figure out your father. So it's engaging in the relationship of you as a person, as a human, that leads me to you saying, hey, you want to meet my dad? Let's go. Come on. As Joe so eloquently put, right? Some of you who are listening, you may have been duped by life and you can tell because your life sucks. (laughs) And so if your life sucks, listen, try Jesus. Don't try Dr. Tony because she's from the west side of the kingdom. But try Jesus. (laughs) South side. South side. My bad. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. What a great episode. Appreciate you guys tuning in. We'll see you next time.